Hello YouTube. Today I'm going to cover something a little different. This is a uh, homemade food cart that I built. Um, actually this thing is a complete commercial kitchen and I built it to sell hot dogs. Um, show you the door here. That right there is my door cover that covers up the opening and I doubled it up as a uh, advertisement sign on the back of it. I put handles. So I'm going to go over this real quick. I'm going to do two videos on this. One from the food cart angle and one I'm going to cover some things that uh, this would do a crossover for people who are preppers or for uh, um, camping. Um, some ideas like that. So first off, what I did is I wanted to go high quality here. I put a griddle on it. This is a uh, natural gas or propane. I've got it set up for propane. Um, it has two burners. It's got a big thick a three-quarter inch steel plate on there uh, once that thing's up and hot you can cook a ton of food on there and right here I have a refrigerator freezer unit I'm gonna open it up and show you it was 85 quart cooler and I built it right into the cart um, it's, it has a digital readout on the back but because of our codes here in the county I'm at they want to have an internal thermometer I hung one in there um, this thing has the capability of flash freezing down to, I want to say it was like negative 20 degrees, and I can pull the specs on that, but um, that thing's amazing. And what it does is I have it set up, can run on 110 or 12 volt, I have it set up around 12 volt. Um, I take that back, it's running 110 off of uh, an inverter, off a 12 volt battery. I'm going to show you guys something here real quick. This compartment right here, which I should have had open before I did this, bear with me here. Hang on a second, we're gonna. All right, so down in here, I have a five gallon water jug. Basically, I bought this at um, Gander Mountain, they were like $20. And then what I did is I drilled a hole in the top of it, I put a little uh, 3 8 threaded coupling on there. And then I attached a flexible line to it. We're going to come around the back here. I have uh, four sinks. Um, it's code. You have to have one sink for washing your hands, which would be that one. And then three sinks, one for dip, dip, and rinse when you're doing anything commercial. This is the back side of it. This is where all the guts are. I want to open these up. And what I did is I just took trap doors that were for, like, access panels. And they're actually very weather tight I'm sorry if this is jerking around. I'm trying to do this off freehand here so you guys can get right in so what I did in here I'm gonna come in close you can see there's my refrigerator unit I got it set up right now on the 110 zoom in here below it would be the prong for 12 volts you could run this thing off of a 12 volt setup um, if you have in I'm gonna like I said I'm gonna cover this in the other video if you have like a camping situation a hunting cabin or anything and you're looking for a refrigerator something that will work these things are amazing um, you could set this up literally with some two deep cell marine batteries a solar panel and you could run this thing uh, pretty much continuous and have make ice out in the woods uh, right here is a eight gallon tank that I use for my waste you can see all my lines running and right there is a pump made by a company called Flowjet. It pumps at 1.6 gallons a minute. It runs on 12 volts. You can see my little wiring hookup. I run it right in there. I put this on a switch. The reason why is because when this pump, see, when there's power to it, it'll, it'll run. So I turn it off so that it doesn't accidentally kick on if, um, cause if there's flow. So in other words, if you open up the sink and you begin to flow water, that would automatically sense a loss in pressure. The pump would activate. So if I was driving down the road with this and one of these sinks kicked on, I don't want that pump to start pumping water and drain all my, my good water while I'm going somewhere. So I put a power switch on it to cut that. I used um, those no burst flex lines for everything in here. Um, you can see it running up underneath into here. I'm going to try and zoom in. And I put, um, there's my drain line right there. Those sinks are all plumbed together, tied into that top of that tank. Then I drilled through the bottom of my plywood. I'm going to come underneath here. And you can see... There's my outlet right there. I can drain this right on the ground or I can hook it up and drain it into a bucket if I need to. Come around right here. This is the heart of the thing. I've got 
two 750 watt power inverters one that i was using to basically run the refrigerator and uh, another one and i would run lights too if needed i usually dedicated one to the refrigerator so one inverter goes to one battery the other to the other then i have because i'm kicking it over to 110 i put a gfi setup in here to protect myself since i might be in a wet location and i'm going to be outside um these batteries when i when i figured out the math on them i should be able to run that refrigerator on a full charge in this and that's if i was using it a lot at least 24 hours because of that capability they gave me the permission that I could go anywhere in the state when I got my license on this. They said that uh, the guy actually told me it was the nicest homemade car he'd ever seen. Um, and because of the, my capability of being able to put food in there, perishable food, take it with me. I'm not relying on anybody. I have my own water supply. I'm going to show you guys something. There's my gas setup. Uh, it runs through. I caulked it all and that runs to the back of the stove there. Up above are my water lines. There's my electrical running over there. That gives me I, that 12 volt tap directly off the battery, and then the other 12 volt taps that you see are going to the backs of the inverters. I'm gonna come over here. I had it set up for two tanks, that way I would never run out. I got a um, splitter, I just got that at a normal RV store, and then that way you can throw it to either tank that you want. This little indicator right here will be green when you activate it to a tank. It'll show green if that tank has pressure. When the tank runs out, it'll drop red. You flip it the other way. Right here is a camping um, hot water heater. It runs on, it has a couple D batteries to get the igniter going. You run propane into it. You run your water in and out of it. You can set your temperatures. And this thing will run continuous hot water until the tank runs dry or your water runs out. So um, basically there's no cart that I know of out here that's running like this with that kind of pressure um, that's manufactured. Everything's usually gravity fed. That's a backup supply. I built an extra one here, so if I needed more water when I was on site, I actually had 10 gallons to run with. I believe, by me, the minimum they wanted to see was like about a three, three and a half gallon, and I wanted to exceed every expectation they put on me, and I did. So up above here, I put an exhaust hood. Um, I went stainless steel just to keep it everything stainless because I was at this commercial. Um, this one, it basically has the grease vent on it. It has two lights. Um, let me see if I have the setup on. Yeah, you can see it clicked on green. That's high, and I can click the lights on. Right now, we're running off the batteries there. I'm gonna come in. You hear that roaring sound? That's the fan pulling it off. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut it back off again. Shut the lights off. Um, and basically, the trailer was a Harbor Freight trailer. I made a mistake when I built it. I didn't realize how much room I was gonna need. It was kind of one of these things. I, I no blueprints. I just did this on the fly. So I added uh, two feet off the back. You can see right there, that little step right there, that's where we welded on. Um, if I remember right, I used a bed frame. <laughs> it was the strongest thing I could find. I was trying to put some metal on there and stuff. I couldn't find anything strong enough to support what I wanted to do. Then I laid down three quarter inch uh, pressure treated. Everything has been primed with oil-based primer. Everything is, all joints are caulked. All the wood has been primed inside and out. Um, Every joint is caulked. This thing is completely watertight. I used uh, Luon, the basically the underfloor laminate, which is moisture resistant, to make my walls. And I did them inside and out. I took 2x4s, ripped them down in half, and built my framing out of 2x4s. I went a little beefy here, um, probably more than I needed to, and that added some weight right there. There is uh, several 2x6s in there, and I, I could have boxed this out a little better. I used drip edge around the edge. For the roof, I just left it alone. I was going to shingle it originally. Up top, I put a vent cap. And then on top, trying to come back in here, if you see the gray on the roof, that's basically the... Uh, I use that uh, roof sealant stuff, the aluminum fiber stuff that they sell at uh, Home Depot that you would use for like a trailer uh, roof or something like that. And I did like three coats on there. And uh, this thing's been in the rain. I've never had any leak issues or anything at all. Um, this uh the refrigerators uh, uh, like i said that's an amazing unit those are about six seven hundred bucks online so that basically covers the food cart guys i'm going to show you again and then what i did for the door i just put studded rods and i was trying to come up with some kind of a setup and i didn't want to get too complicated so i put six studs in there i back out here i drilled the six holes in there to match up and then i just use a wing nut to attach it and i put two little handles on it right there to grab it and i painted everything put a name on it i put the camper weather stripping around it and uh, i have driven this thing in horrible rainstorms 
and have gotten to my location, popped the door, and it's completely dry inside. Um, so this is just an idea if anybody's thinking of doing a food cart. If you are, send me a message, and I can give you some ideas and some pitfalls that I ran into. Maybe save you some money if you're thinking about building your own. But uh, here's some ideas for you. And like I said, this will also cross over into anybody who's doing prepper work or anything like that because... Um, or into prepping or into camping even because there's some uh, basically these ideas will transfer over.